In this video, I'll explain what parametric models are for making statistical inferences, focusing on the normal and t distributions. So far, we have used simulation methods to make statistical inferences. For example, to determine if a coin is fair, we would set up a model, simulate flipping the coin, and then repeat this simulation many times. Then we would look at the resulting sampling distribution, and use this sampling distribution to compute a p-value, which would let us draw a conclusion about our null hypothesis. But the central limit theorem tells us that if our sample size is large enough, our sampling distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution, where the center is at 50%, and the standard deviation is the population standard deviation divided by, in this case, the square root of 20. This normal distribution is described by this formula. It's called parametric because it depends on the parameters mu, the population mean, and sigma, the population standard deviation. And we could use this normal model to compute the p-value using tools built into most statistical software. Let's look at an example. Let's say your favorite ice cream shop claims to serve 4-ounce scoops of ice cream, and that there is a standard deviation of 0.5 ounces from scoop to scoop. So you purchase and weigh 10 scoops and get a sample average of 4.6 ounces. The central limit theorem tells you that a sampling distribution of 10 scoop averages can be modeled reasonably well by a normal distribution with a mean of 4 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.5 divided by the square root of 10 ounces. And then we can use this statistic software to compute the p-value. Now, you might be looking at that standard deviation and wondering, well, we know the sample standard deviation, but how do we know the population standard deviation? Also, you might be thinking that the central limit theorem needs the sample size to be pretty large in order to know that the sampling distribution is roughly normal, but we only had 10 scoops in our sample. It turns out that these are both really important issues. First, for the issue about the standard deviation, there's an interesting story behind the solution. It turns out that there was a person named William Gossett who worked at the Guinness Brewery. He was trying to test the amount of resin in the hops they were using to brew their beer. When he used a normal distribution, he found that the beer wasn't so good. So he started from scratch and devised a new type of distribution that would let him make inferences without knowing the population standard deviation. He called this distribution the t-distribution, and here is the formula that describes the t-distribution. Like the normal distribution, it depends on several parameters. And there are actually many different t-distributions, and each one depends on the degrees of freedom, which, for a single sample, is one less than the sample size. The distribution shown here has two degrees of freedom. For a sample with five degrees of freedom, the distribution would look like this, and then 10 degrees of freedom would look like this, and 30 degrees of freedom. And as the degrees of freedom, and the sample size, increases, the t-distribution becomes increasingly similar to a normal distribution. So the t-distribution helps you work with smaller samples when you don't know the population standard deviation. So if we go back to the ice cream scoop example, we don't need to know the population standard deviation, we can just work with the sample standard deviation. And we would use a t-distribution with a mean of 4 ounces and 9 degrees of freedom. And our statistical software could use this to compute the p-value. Let's look at another example. Let's say you want to know, has the age at which mothers have their first child changed over the years? To answer this question, you access a database and find data from 150 mothers recorded in 1980 and data from 250 mothers recorded in 2018 and you record some summary statistics. These samples were of 150 and 250 people. They had means of 22.6 years and 26.9 years, and they had standard deviations of 4.6 and 6.7 years. Now, to use a t-distribution, we need to know the compound statistic, the standard error, that is, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, and the degrees of freedom. Now, the compound statistic is just the difference in sample means, 
but the standard error and degrees of freedom are much more complicated and depend a bit on whether or not the two populations have equal variances. If they don't, then the formula for standard error is this, and the formula for degrees of freedom is this. And you usually let your software calculate these. Then you would look at the resulting t-distribution and compute the p-value. In this case, the p-value would be approximately 0. Now, remember the two issues we identified a couple of minutes ago? That central limit theorem uses the population standard deviation, which we don't know, and that the sample size needs to be large enough to use a normal distribution approximation. Well, the first issue was addressed by using a t-distribution, but we haven't completely resolved the second issue. How large is large enough? If your original sample was roughly normally distributed, then a t-distribution will definitely work. But if not, then it might not work to use the t-distribution. And in cases like this, your best bet is to just use simulation methods, which will always work. Now, let's summarize what we've seen here. We looked at the idea of parametric inference, which is where you use formulas to create sampling distributions. These formulas depend on parameters like the mean, standard deviation, and degrees of freedom. We looked at two types of parametric distributions, the normal distribution and the t-distribution. They both have rather complicated formulas, and you need your statistical software to perform computations with them. To use the normal distribution, you need to know the population standard deviation and need to have a large enough sample. To use the t-distribution, you can use the sample standard deviation, but you either need the sample to follow a roughly normal distribution, or you still need to have a large enough sample. While these parametric methods can be speedy, they can sometimes produce inaccurate results, but simulation methods will always work.